There is a common misconception out there that Debian is a stable distribution. Now, I know what you Debian fanboys are thinking. Man, of course Debian is stable. It's the most stable. It's literally the granddaddy of all stable distros. But you can break anything, right? Just, you could break the most unbreakable thing in the world because everything is breakable. No matter how stable it is, Debian can be broken if you are as much of an idiot as I am. <laughs> so I have been using Debian now for what, three days or so, three or four days, and it has been a rocky first start. But the thing is, is that it's not Debian's fault. So before everyone who is a Debian fan goes to click the unsubscribe button, know this, Debian is fine. I'm still going to do my long-term review. I'm going to add some things to it to make it more interesting. I'm going to switch over to testing. I'm going to, you know, probably play around with Nix a little bit inside of Debian. I'm going to do a whole bunch of really interesting stuff for the review and it's going to be fine. But my process to get to fine was not a easy one. It was not good and it was all my fault. It was not Debian's fault even just a little bit, because if I'd used my brain, my pea-sized little brain, I would have realized what the problem was without having to install Debian four, count them four times before I finally got to the right point, right? Now, let me defend myself just a little bit. First of all, I'm not a Debian user. I haven't ever been a Debian user. Uh, I don't think I'll ever be a Debian user, to be honest with you. It's just not my sort of thing. I prefer distributions that are a little bit more up-to-date. I like Fedora, for example. Fedora's a mixture between Arch and Debian because it kind of sits in the middle. It has more up-to-date packages, but it isn't quite as bleeding edge as Arch is, right? So that's really where my heart lies. But, you know, Debian has its uses for a lot of people. It's fantastic on servers. On every VPS that I have, Debian is the, the operating system that I use on it. So Debian has its place and it's really good, but it's not for me. And I know that already going in, but that's really beside the point. The point of the the whole video here is, is that I'm a moron. I'm a bleeding moron. It's horrible. And honestly, I, I'm surprised that I know how to walk and breathe at the same time sometimes. So about three months ago or so, I made a purchase and I bought a brand new AMD 6750 XT graphics card. Not the top end, highest end thing. It's been around for a little while, but it, it replaced my RX 580, which I'd had for years, and it was a good purchase. But honestly, I'm not a gamer. Everybody knows this about me, so I don't, let's just say, push the limits of my graphics card. And to be honest with you, I kind of forgot that I bought it. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. It's like, I really, the only reason I, w I bought it in the first place was because my f 580 was making some really weird noises. Like the, the fan was dying or whatever, and it's just easier to, you know, replace it than fix it. So I forgot that I had this brand new graphics card. So I went to install Debian Bullseye, which uses the 5.10 kernel. Now, I would think that the 5.10 kernel was around when the RX or the 56, the 68, 750 X, this is what I'm talking about. I don't even know what the name of the damn thing is. The 6750 XT, I would think that the 5.10 kernel was around then, but apparently it was not, or at least the hardware support for that particular kernel for my particular graphics card is not where it should be. And the thing is, is that because I forgot that I had the graphics card, which just, I mean, seriously, I'm a stupid, stupid, stupid person. How do you forget you buy a graphics card? I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> At this point, it's really bad. I'm sure I'm making a fantastic impression on all the new subscribers. <laughs> but anyways, you know, but I forgot about it. You know, I just didn't even think about it really and I went to install Bullseye and of course because it doesn't have good apparently good hardware support for that particular graphics card the first uh, installer wouldn't even get to the installation part it just showed me a whole bunch of non-free uh, or, or, or fi firmware errors now I have a fairly long history when it comes to Debian and their ISO problem. They have a ton of ISOs. They really do give Arco Linux a run for their money when it comes to the number of ISOs that they offer. And they, they do about as good a job as Arco as showing you where those ISOs are. You know, so I have a very interesting opinion on Debian and their ISO problem. But I had 
a Debian Bullseye non-free ISO on Ventoy that should have worked. So that's what I went with first. When that wouldn't get to the installer, I figured, well, maybe this ISO is just too old. So, because I think it was like 11.5 or 11.6 or something, and 11.7 exists. It's, so I went to their website, spelunked through all the menus and stuff like that you had to go through in order to get to the non free stuff. You know, there's a couple clicks you got to get to in order to get to the list, and then you got to click a couple more times to actually get to the file list where it's actually where you can download it. Beside the point, Got the non-free ISO, which is the K that I wanted, which is the KDE live version, so I could use the Calamari's installer. I just figured I'd use that one because I was going to use Plasma anyways. And uh, that one I got installed, but it wouldn't show a picture. So at this point, I'm blaming Debian. Like I have seriously bad words to say about Debian at this point in the process. And uh, you know, guys, got to remember, completely my fault. If I had remembered. There are ways around of there's a way there, there are ways around using the 5.10 kernel. I could use testing, I could use SID or whatever it's called. I could alter the the installation process to use a different kernel if I wanted to. There are so many different ways to move around inside of Bullseye to get to the right kernel that I would need in order to use on my system. I could have done that, but I didn't think about it. I remember I'm an idiot. So I continued on. I installed the XFC version, thinking that maybe the KD Plasma version was just broken. Uh, that one did install, and I did get a picture on that one, surprisingly. And if I had stopped there and thought about why I was having the problem, it would have been so easy because I would have just able, you know, I could have just switched over to, you know, the testing repositories and installed the proper kernel, and I would have been on Debian Bullseye XFC version right then from that point. It would have been fine. But I didn't think about it. I was still thinking about why this isn't working because what that what the problem was with that installation was that it would not give me display resolutions beyond like 720p. It didn't even have the options inside of XRand or inside of the display uh, settings panel. And uh, you know I thought maybe it was a driver's issue, so I installed you know the AMD GPU driver, which should have already been installed, which it was actually already installed. Again, should have been a clue. Was not a clue because again freaking moron uh so uh i ended up installing I, I said screw it i'm not doing bullseye so my original plan as you'll know from the announcement video of my 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 debian announcement for my long-term review my original plan was to go from bullseye to bookworm when bookworm comes out i wanted to test that process but after installing Debian three times, I was like, ah, no, I'm not doing this again. I'm going to install Bookworm in the morning. So I, you know, I went to sleep, got up in the morning, installed Bookworm, and it installed perfectly fine. That was when, that, you know, after hours of being an idiot, that was when I was like, why did this work and not the other one work? And then there was like a light bulb moment above my head. I was like, oh, yeah, I installed that stupid GPU that I had to have, and uh, it probably wasn't supported by 5.10. That's probably the problem. Um, so, yeah. So my whole thing of making this video was that Debian is not stable if you break it yourself. That, that's really the, the whole thing of this thing. Is like, So I, I'm going to put a very clickbaity title on this video just to let you all know. I, I'm 100% fully aware that the title of this video or, and maybe even the thumbnail of this video is very clickbaity. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I, I'm a YouTuber. What did you expect? So yeah, my initial start with my Debian long-term review for this time has not gone well, but has nothing to do with Debian. But I wanted to kind of talk about it a little bit because I needed to get it off my chest because I'm a moron. Like, I don't even know why I continue to do this. I obviously should go back to Windows where you can only use it one way. You can't break anything. And if you do break it, you just nuke and pave and start over again. There's no fixing anything. You know, that's what I should probably do. Or maybe use Mac OS where the, the same thing's kind of true. So this was the end of my Linux experiment, apparently. Because <laughs> I'm just too stupid for Linux, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, that is it for this video. If you have thoughts on this whole fiasco you can leave them in the comments below just let me know how much of an idiot i obviously am uh just be kind about it i don't you don't need to be meaner to me than i'm to myself so anyways that's it for this video you can follow me on mastodon odyssey those links will be in the video description you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast 
Links for Libera Pay and YouTube will be in the video description as well. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel's not anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are all awesome. Seriously, thank you for sticking with this dumbass. I appreciate it. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.